Learning to read an ECG lead two. A 12 lead ECG gives us detailed information about the electrical activity in the heart. We will be focusing on lead two, which is most commonly used for routine monitoring. Each contraction of the heart produces identifiable waveforms on an ECG. Being able to interpret each of these components helps us to identify if our heart is beating normally or abnormally. In addition to identifying these waveforms, we will also be measuring their duration, and that will give us more information as to where the abnormality is occurring within the heart. So let's start at the beginning. The P wave is the first component of a normal ECG waveform, and it represents contraction of the atria, also known as atrial depolarization. This is the conduction of electrical impulses from the SA node through the atria to the AV node. When assessing a P wave, it should be round and upright, come before every QRS complex, and be between 0 0.06 and 0 0.12 seconds in duration. As electricity moves past the AV node, it quickly travels through the bundle of Hiss and Purkinje fibers to cause contraction of the ventricles. This is also known as ventricular depolarization. When assessing the QRS complex, measuring it, it should be between 0 0.06 and 0 0.10 seconds. It occurs after every P wave and can range between 5 and 30 millimeters in height. The T wave represents ventricular repolarization or a return to rest. T waves are upright, round, and follow every QRS complex. Interesting fact, atria also has repolarization phase, but you cannot see it because it's buried in the QRS complex. Hey, did you notice I missed out on a few things? Let's go back to the beginning and I'm going to talk to you about the PR interval. This is from the first upward deflection of the P wave and you measure it until the first downward deflection to the QRS wave. This represents the entire time it takes for the SA node to fire, get to the AV node, and for the AV node to release the energy to the ventricles. There is a delay on purpose by the AV node, and that is to allow for the atria to completely empty its contents. When measuring the PR interval, you should see that it is between 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. The QT interval shows us the timeline for the full ventricular depolarization, repolarization cycle, so from contraction to relaxation. It is measured from the start of the QRS wave until the end of the T wave and generally is between 0.36 to 0.40 seconds in duration. Last but not least, the ST segment. When the S wave returns to baseline, we measure that to the point where the T wave leaves baseline. We are looking to see that it is an isoelectric line, meaning that it, there is neither a positive or a negative deflection. This is an area of interest, as often we can detect myocardial ischemia or injury when the ST segment moves above or below baseline. Excellent, so we are now ready to go into our eight steps to evaluate an ECG. Step number one, rhythm. We wanna know if our rhythm is regular or irregular. And to do this, we will use a set of calipers and we measure from the R to R wave or we can use a piece of paper if you don't have calipers and you just mark it, I've already pre-marked mine, from your R to R and then you're gonna take this all the way down your six second strip to identify if we have a regular or irregular rhythm. In this lead, we do have a regular rhythm for the ventricle contraction. Second, we're gonna look at the atrial rhythm and do the same thing. And we can see here that we also have a regular atrial rhythm. So for step one, both atrial and ventricular rhythms are regular. In step two, we calculate the rate. Using a six second strip, which this is, we simply count the number of R waves and multiply by 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 90 beats per minute. In step three, we're now evaluating the P wave. And we wanna look at all of the P waves in our six second strip. And here we see that they are round, upright, and they do come before a QRS complex. Step four is measuring the PR interval. So again, we're going to be taking our calipers and we're moving along all of the different waveforms in the six second strip. 
And for this strip, we'll calculate that out. And we have two and a half small squares times by 0 0.04 second gives us the normal value of 0 0.10 second in duration. In step five, we're going to assess the QRS complex. Again, using our calipers and measuring all of the QRS complexes on the strip, we find that we have two squares, which is equal to 0 0.08 seconds within our normal range. In step six, we're going to look at the T waves and we can see that they are round and upright and follow every QRS complex. So then we can quickly go into measuring our QT interval from the first downstroke to QRS to the end of the T wave. We measure that and we find here that we have a calculation of 0 0.036 seconds, which is within normal range. So the last step is interpretation. All of our values have been within normal range, and so we can say this is normal sinus rhythm. That's another lesson done. Congratulations. Be sure to get yourself a pair of calipers and use them as often as you can to practice this skill. At this stage, you should be able to identify normal versus abnormal. Comment below and let me know if this was helpful. I do enjoy reading your feedback. And subscribe so that you'll be in line for the next release. Until we see you again, make it a great day.